cardinal partly. Before we begin, kindly turn off the microphone to avoid any interruption. Please use the chat box for any question. Thank you for your cooperation. Pare Hariri Sakaliyan. Revenue Keeper akan bermula sebentar lagi. Sila tutup microphone Anda untuk menyalakan sebarang lampu. Sila gunakan chat box sekiranya ada soalan. Terima kasih atas kerjasama Anda. Bunga gantang di jati peramu. Indah warnanya bagaikan bara. Selamat datang para tetamu. Dengan izin dibulakan acara. A very good afternoon to our illustrious guests. The secretary humbly welcomes the special guest to the closing ceremony of the Canada series. Professor Dr. Dr. Noraini, the chairman of National Science Association, Mr. Azmita Arashi, SRC of Science and Mathematics, PTD Kuala Gansar, Mr. Lucy, the principal of SNK Dato Haji Abdul Wahab, working principal SNK Anderson, Juan Mishira Salma Binti Abad Abdul Shafi, represent sector from Belajaran Negeri Pera, and administrator from SNK Anderson and SNK Dato Haji Abdul Wahab. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, today's participants are comprised of teachers and students from all over the state of Pera. The secretary has provided four links to join. The first link is specially for the secretary of SNK Anderson and SNK Dato Haji Abdul Wahab and also for the special guests. Link 3, 2 and 4 are the participants from all over the state of Pera. The very speaker, Mr. Masri Abdul Hamid from Petronas. The key with advisors, Mrs. Nooriza Binti Awang, Mrs. Nooru Zuraini Binti Zongkesi, Mrs. Aini Rashida Binti Ahmad Zuhairi, Mrs. Nooru Ain Binti Mohamad Dainal, Administrator, Teacher, and my fellow friends. I am Harini Gunasegran, and I will be your host for today. On behalf of the committee members, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you again to the Canada series of today. From base to field, thank you for taking some time, time off to join us today. We hope that you will learn a lot by end of this webinar. Dengan ini, majlis menjemput saudara Ali Imran untuk memimpin baca Andawa. Majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh dan selamat sejahtera. <coughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala sayidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajmain. Ya karim ya wadud, sesungguhnya kami berhimpun pada hari ini bagi menyatakan kesyukuran di atas kurniaan-Mu yang tidak ternilai. Jadikanlah kami hamba-hamba-Mu yang sentiasa bersyukur sama ada nikmat yang sedikit lebih-lebih lagi nikmat yang melimpah ruah kepada kami. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Engkau berkatilah dan rahmatilah perjalanan majlis pada hari ini. Sesungguhnya Engkau maha mengetahui bahawa kami di sini ingin menimba ilmu-Mu yang sangat luas bagi mengembangkan potensi kami sebagai hamba-Mu yang Engkau radai. Justeru berkati dan rahmatilah perhimpunan kami ini. Kurniakanlah kepada kami ilmu-Mu. Sinarilah hati-hati kami dengan cahaya dan hidayah-Mu. Semoga dengannya kami mampu menemani syabaran daya saing dan mampu mengangkat matabat diri, keluarga, masyarakat dan negara. Ya Allah, Ya Tuhan, 
kami Kenaikanlah juga kepada kami kesihatan anggota Kecegasan minda, ketenangan jiwa dan kekuatan semangat Rabbana atina fi dunia hasanah Wa fil akhirati hasanah Wa kina azaban nar Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Terima kasih saudara Ali Ijan atas bacaan doa itu tadi. Hadirin sekalian, terbang di awan burung jentayu, di atas papan batang jerami. Tampilah tuan kami merayu bersama ucapan kata berasmi. Before we begin, let's get to know better about our special guest today. Profesor Dr. Dr. Nuraini Binti Idri, The Chairman of National STEM Association is the Honorary Professor of UN STEM Center in Research and Innovation Office. Dr. Nuraini completed her diploma in Virial Management Corporation in Virian Bahar. Then, she received a Bachelor of Science Education Honors from University of Malaya in 1982. She also got her Master in Mathematics Education from the OHIO State University, Columbus. In 1998, she obtained a PhD, sorry, a PhD in the OHIO State University, Columbus. Dr. Dr. Nuraini used to be the coordinator of University Malaya and Warwick University, United Kingdom for CC Project, British Council, University Malaya. She also had been a vice president of Malaysian Mathematics Education Association in University Malaya. Dr. Nuraini's area of expertise includes classroom assessment, problem solving and evaluation, and mathematics education. Now, please welcome our special guest, Dr. Dr. Nuraini Binti Idri, the Chairman of National STEM Association, or SPEECH. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. A very, uh, very nice... Uh, Uh, you know our uh, MC today uh, hari ini ya hari ini gunas uh, very nice very well organized uh, congratulations you, yeah? all right thank, thank you, you. Uh, you have done a good job as the MC today thank you all right so of course uh, I so would like to mention a few names here yeah. so uh, before I start off my sharing uh, so I so would like to thank you and congratulate Mr. Aznizal Arashid, eh? SIC Plus of Science and Mathematics, PPD Kuala Kansar. Puan Rabainia, SIC Plus of Science and Mathematics, PPD Kimia. Mr. Lufti, uh, Principal of SMK, Datuk Haji Abdul Wahab. Wakil Principal, SMK Anderson. Puan Mus... Virah Salma binti Abdul Radi represent uh, sektor pembelajaran negeri Perak uh, administrator from SMK Anderson SN, and also SMK Datuk Aji Abdul Wahab so all these people has been done a good job that train all our children today and i see that all our children you know faces are bubbling with energy and then um, ready to do science, especially in chemistry that we are focusing today. Very good, very well done. All right. So yes, uh, our country now really needs uh, young people like all our children now. Uh, either you are in uh, Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, Form 4 or Form 5 now. Uh, we need a support from all those PPD, JPN and also the principal to make sure that um, our children of Pera really love chemistry uh, and also mathematics, physics, chemist, uh, biology and um, additional mathematics. This is a very, very interesting subject. Why I said it's interesting? Because of my teacher. Agree or not, our children today? You know, so let's all teachers and I'm sure with SIC+, plus, and all these principal, uh, you are very good, very, very dynamic. And of course, not forgetting Puan Noriza that uh, organizing 
uh, the champion of uh, this uh, gathering. So keep up the good job. Yeah. Okay. As we know now, we are in the pandemic, and then we need a lot of people very good in chemistry because we need to study about DNA, about the bonding, about the uh, met, uh, um, you know periodic tables. So what, what shall we mix and what shall we do to help our country to come out with vaccine, for instance? Because now uh, we are using other people's vaccine, you know? So we need future, future chemists. I'm sure uh, after this, uh, our uh, guest speaker from... Uh, uh, we will talk about from waste to fuel, yeah? Uh, so all this is so chemistry. And then uh, when you want to do sanitizer, yeah? Because now uh, pandemic time, a lot of people use sanitizer. So this is also related to uh, what we are learning in chemistry. You know, how much alcohol should we put in our sanitizer? What are the nice smell we should put inside the sanitizer? What are, you know, uh, the chemical that we use so that our hand, when we use the sanitizer, won't, uh, you know, uh be the skin won't peel off and then you won't get hurt and all these things so these are the things that the importance of uh, materials and uh, that's why we need to learn a periodic table in chemistry so that we know which group should be able to mix with another group for instance metal and non-metal alkaline and non-alkaline you know so uh then you know different different ph so what are the things? And then when we study about herbs, you know, how can herbs, you know, herbs also to help uh, pandemic, to help uh, reduce, uh, you know, symptom or reduce uh, to help uh, COVID-19. So that's why we need a lot of children, a lot of you all to really think what can you help in the uh, country from the school. But then you work together with your teacher, work together with the officer from the PPD. We have a lot of SIC plus, so let's work together. And then, besides, uh, you know, coming out with fun learning in the chemistry, we also can venture to become inventor. We don't want our student just to buy things. We want our student also to think as a inventor of the future yeah why for instance i'm sure you would like to see your product be displayed uh, in the supermarket you know for instance like um soap to clean up uh, you know for washing uh, plates uh, what type of soap you can come out yeah i have seen student uh, in slango uh, we have a project called mini theater stem where this uh, group of student they produce soap from waste oil you know all those uh, cooking oil that people uh, throw it away but they collect it and then with the helps from the chemistry teacher so they have come out with a very uh, lovely soap very nice and then they test it out the safety because chemistry involves a lot of chemical right so we also have to take care about the uh, safety the, the the materials that we use so now th this group of students has start selling their invention on uh, the soap that they invent so this is the way forward we want all the student um that uh, either you are in the social science or in of course when you are in this uh, pure sciences you have to be the leaders of the inventor think something what can you do from your what whatever you are learning in your class because we don't want you just to get an A. We want more than that. We want you also to practice, to become inventor. And then before uh, and to, to strengthen up your in, to become inventor, we also want you to become a good researcher. You know? So maybe you can ask, Dato, I'm only a school children. I'm still young. No, you still can do experiment. You can do a simple, simple experiment using, you know, um, a, a safe chemical. If it's a, a poison chemical, of course, you need your chemistry teacher to guide you. 
yeah because there's there's you need to learn if it's uh the the chemical is is uh, dangerous to use uh in the experiment you need expert you know the chemistry teacher the scientist the you know or industry player to coll collaborate so teachers those who are coming today in, uh, to listen for this uh sharing <clears throat> please also uh, make friend with your industry partner what you are doing today you invite a uh, representative from petronas to talk about oil and gas uh, fuel and all this thing excellent so now you can also invite them to partner when you are teaching in the school so that the student will be able to explore further we 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 as i said just now we do we are not only start come to school and study and memorize formulas and get a's we don't want that we also want every child to understand yeah they must paham apa yang dia belajar apa kegunaan kegunaan bahan-bahan uh, chemical itu dalam kehidupan seharian kita so then they can become uh, you know more fun more they, they want to explore for them so as a student yes i understand you want to pass your your subject you want to do well but at the same time while you do your learning you must also do a lot of reading and a lot of research from that research let's come up with something you know we i have a project now with uh slango and kelantan so a lot of the students they come out not only with the sanitizer they also come out with some uh food you know or ice cream uh using roselle and then they plant their roselle at their school so then they study what's the roselle content that uh you know they they they, they uh taste nice but is safe so they they all these students with the help of the teacher and the help of the nutritious they become excited they want to explore further they want to know better so very good uh, i mean uh most of the school that has uh doing this type of project um has the, the product now uh, they start selling and then uh we also make a uh, an, uh, a presentation using a youtube we share it and then um thanks uh and alhamdulillah uh agency under matrix uh, and meeting yeah uh, has uh, uh, noticed that and they come and approach me so we work together to help our student they are still in school and some is from two or the student but they are start selling they start uh, selling their product so while they learn chemistry they learn uh, physics chem biology and admits they come out with some simple innovation so the moment they come out with this innovation they are able to learn better they they will have more fun they learn better they see that oh okay uh, uh okay the, uh, we need more of uh, chlorine here but less alcohol here and why and how and then how do we want to come out with a nice smell what type of flower why this flower produce a nice smell you know to to do our our invention product so teachers uh all the um, ppd sic plus help pair up and when i see then our student i uh, know their face from this uh, uh, web, uh, webinar online, uh, I noticed they can do it. So the only thing is that now we have to work together. I also would like to invite all teachers to become National STEM Association Malaysia members. You can go to our website, you can register online. Then we, of, we always organize several activities several invention uh, activities and com uh, and also competition so that we'll be able to inculcate the stem culture among young children when we say stem culture it's not only learning chemistry learning concept of chemistry but we must also inculcate learning of stem skill what are the stem skill stem skill we need to encourage our student to become problem 
solver. We need to encourage our students to become uh, innovative. We need to inculcate our students to become creative. Because these three uh, problem so complex problem solving, creativity, critical, critical thinking, and uh, problem solving, these four, is very, very important now we are in the fourth industrial revolution. During this fourth industrial revolution, is a new career coming out. So it's no longer that if you, you, you study, come to the school, and you expect to get a job. You know? So because this fourth industrial revolution, we want to produce uh, school children that are deep in their thinking, and then they be able to explore. All right? So that's why uh, in the classroom, students and teachers, the way we are teaching, we need to do a lot of activities that encourage uh, STEM uh, invention, STEM creativity, and STEM exploration. And then uh, this will make science more useful. And I also would like to see that our children use all this vocabulary. I have heard this uh, sentence uh, from student in uh, Terengganu. They said, uh, Dato, uh, this nasi lemak eh, tak, not, not so nice lah. Sodium, a uh, lack of sodium chloride. You know? So they are using the word sodium chloride uh, related to their nasi lemak. You know? So this is the things that we would like to hear the school children you talking and using in their everyday life about um, sodium chloride is only a salt, right? Uh, so, you know, so you use that. And then another student will talk. Uh, oh, I need to empty my bladder, you know. So they use scientific words, uh, empty bladder. That means they want to go to uh, toilet to, to uh, ease their, yeah, yeah, you know, system. So these are the things that we would like our students. They are using all the scientific uh, vocabulary in the com communication. So teachers also, we, we, we must talk, relax, you know, in the classroom uh, to make sure that the student will be able to see, oh, okay, I, I, I know that. Uh, this is, use, I mean, if it's too salty for our nasi lemak, it's not good, right? It will lead to high blood pressure, right? So, um, all this will be related to the health issue, right now. So, from the chemistry that you are learning just now, so the, the, the materials that you use to learn just now, we'll be able to use it in your everyday life. So then um, uh, students and teachers, you know, on and as the guests today, we must be able to link whatever concept we are teaching in the classroom, they can see what they can use in everyday life. So this is the the, the, the uh, situation of teaching and learning in this 21st century. And then in the classroom, you know, in, in, uh, or in the webinar, we must ask questions. You know, so uh, let's say I want to ask Siva, do you like chemistry? Siva, can you answer you like chemistry or not? Yes. Why? Why? Because I explore many new things. Uh, what do you explore so far? Uh, I've explored about the organic chemistry and today's uh, series is also related to the, to the topic so I can get more information about that. Okay, very good. So, and, and then uh, what about Danisha? Danisha, do you like chemistry? Uh, yes, sir. Why? Why do you like chemistry? Uh, because I can learn more about uh, our daily life and um, and it's kind of interesting as well too. Okay, uh, even though uh, uh, they try to answer, but it's not yet. Yeah. So because I need you all to talk about um, you know the the real deep of chemistry. For instance, okay, I really like to know about chemistry because I know that. In our body, how much water is our in our body? How much 70%. water? Huh? Seventy percent. 
Very good. So why 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 that uh, we require seventy five percent of water in our body? Why? Ah, so this is the scenario in the classroom. Uh, teachers, students, we have to interact like this. We have to ask question. Why? Why do you need that? Why do we need water? But is it is it uh, is it normal water in our body? Or what? What type of uh, water in our body? What else in our body? Okay, never mind. <laughs> you don't have to answer. Okay, uh, uh, you know. So this is the things that we have to ask ourselves when we are learning chemistry. You know. But beside water in our body, of course, a lot, a lot of bloods in our body, right? And then inside the blood, what are the contents of uh, hemoglobin, right? And then how is the transportation of oxygen in the body? So when you learn about chemistry, not only we, we memorize the periodic table, but we learn the, the use of the chemical in our body. Why, why is it like that? You know, so then we learn. Do, and then what happened if our body lack of iron? So this is also related to health, isn't it? This is also related to biology. So that means when in our classroom, we need to discuss with our teacher that way. Then we'll be able to see the importance of chemistry in our everyday life. And then if we have excess ID, what happened to our kidney? How many kidney do you have? You know, what is the role of the kidney? To filter the waste, right? So how? How did they filter? So the learning of chemistry here is very beautiful, very unique, and very, you know, you, we can make it fun. We'll see it useful. So all this, when as we go along from form one to form two to form three to form four to form five, then to uh, form six or matriculation or to the universities, we'll be able to learn, oh, I want to become what? I want to become a doctor or I want to become a pharmacist or I want to, uh, I want to design uh, products for medical use or I want to design uh, products for uh, uh, people, you know, people to use to uh, detergents, uh, to detergents to use to wash plate. And I want to put my name there. I'm going to put uh, Hariri Gunas or Siva product. Would you like to see your name there in the supermarket? Yes or no, Harini? Yes. Huh? Yeah. So because of that, we have to make sure that our learning of chemistry related to become a good researcher, a young researcher, a good young inventor, a young innovator, and a young creative thinking. All right? So thank you very much. I really um, enjoy, even though I have a short uh, conversation with some of the audience, but I'm looking forward uh, uh, to see teachers, uh, CIC, uh, the, the officer, SIC plus, you make a change to pair up and uh, share with me. Say, so, Dato, now in Kam, uh, Komta, uh, Komta Pera. All right. So, uh, Hariri products from my school uh, has come out with uh, this type of products. So, this is the way forward we should be doing that. So, thank you very much. And then, um, we love us. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I officially uh um you know uh, end my talk and also uh i mean of course you have another talk today but this uh, uh, this ceremony uh, will close uh, and more fun uh, way forward on your series of talks and action with that thank you very much all the best and looking forward to see you in other uh function and occasion all right thank you and pass back to our mc Thank you, Dr. Nolai, for your wonderful speech. Now, dear participants, let us all watch the final gimmick visited by our team.
Uh, Cikgu Noriza, boleh kita ambil gambar ramai-ramai? Ada sesi dah tu, sekejap. Okay. It's a wonderful game, isn't it? Now, please all participants, kindly turn on your camera for the photography session. Sekarang, semua hari ini diminta buka kamera anda untuk sesi fotografi. All participants, kindly turn on your camera for the photography session. Semua hadirin diminta buka kamera anda untuk sesi fotografi. Dah ke? Okay, dan. Alright, thank you. Alright, bye-bye. All the best. Okay, all the best. Terima kasih kerana menghadirkan diri kepada tetamu khas kita kerana sudi menghadirkan diri ke webinar ini. We will buy your farewell as we are about to start. Thank you. Bye. Okay. All the participants are allowed to turn off your camera. Now, our moderator, Shivapurani Swakumar, will take this stage. Thank you, Harini. Hello, students. How are you? I am Shivapurani Swakumar, and I'll be your moderator for today. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Please welcome our speaker, Mr. Mashti Abdul Hamid, from Petronas to talk about from waste to fuel. This topic is related to chemistry form 5 syllabus, which is in chapter 2, carbon compound. There is also a PBL activity in page 70 regarding the production of bioethanol as an alternative energy source of hydrocarbon from organic waste. Before we move on, let's get to know our speaker better. Mr. Mashti Abdul Hamid is an experienced risk practitioner with a demonstrated history of working in the oil and energy industry. He is also skilled in enterprise risk management, business continuity management, business planning, analytical skills, retail management, management, and sales plan. Strong program and project management professional with a Bachelor of Science focused in industrial chemistry from University of Science Malaysia. Now, I invite Mr. Majdi to start his speech. Uh, thank you, Siva. Uh, Siva Purani. Yeah, I would like to share my screen. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, selamat petang to everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the Babagi Ratuk for a very good uh, contact setting opening. Uh, so now I know what is uh, this particular event is all about. And also to Encik uh, Aznizal and also Encik Rabania from the PPD Kinta, uh, Encik Rutfi from uh, Principal SMK Datuk Haji Abdul Wahab and also Wakil Principal SMK Anderson. Pan Musfira uh, from Sector Permanent Negeri Perak and also all the administrators. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, particular session. Actually, I'm excited to do sharing because sharing is part of my passion. Uh, especially in chemistry, uh, I do not have a lot of value to share uh, in terms of chemistry. But when Ponoriza asked me for this particular session, I already said yes. 
even she yet to share uh, the 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 apa ni uh, title of the presentation so she asked me to to share on uh, ways to fuel uh, fuel is part of my uh, business right now uh, as part of staff pretonas where we uh, produce uh, uh, lots of kind of fuel uh, in our downstream industry so i would like to share it's actually waste to fuel is uh, is a uh, part of a small subject in the total energy industry and uh, it's actually now uh, we are looking for a sustainable future that's why my my uh, introduction here is ways to fuel is actually to for a sustainable future so i will talk more about this sustainability later so uh, some background of myself uh, my name is majdi abdul hamid uh, i'm 45 years old uh, graduated uh, from uh, University of Science of Malaysia, uh, Bachelor of Applied uh, Science uh, in Industrial Chemistry. Uh, so Industrial Chemistry is a very interesting subject. So since my secondary school, I'm a little bit uh, passionate in, in terms of chemistry subject. So during my uh, SPM days, I was looking what future for me for next five years. What course that I will take in, uh, in the university, which university. So uh, since childhood, uh, I, I, I was uh, spurred by the, the, the TV series of MacGyver. So we see a lot of chemical uh, and also phys physics uh, theories uh, applied there. So for me, it's more on application. So industrial chemistry is actually in between of uh, pure chemists and also it's a bridge between pure chemists uh, to the chemical engineers so you need to understand the the the, the demarcation between uh, pure chemists industrial chemists and also the finally the chemical engineers okay in the chem chemistry uh, school of chemistry so pure chemists is, is, is studying more on uh, theories and also doing uh, experiments to 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 uh, to get evidence on their theoretical or hypothesis. But industry chemists uh, is looking more on application. <clears throat> we buy, we learn 60% of the theories, but we spend more time uh, doing experiments, uh, doing testing uh, on the theories to apply to the to the industry or to apply uh, for, for consumer products. Uh, so uh, that's why I choose the industrial chemistry because uh, I already set my mind to become uh, a chemist that, that can can uh, formulate things uh, for for people to use. So industrial chemistry is very interesting uh, subject, and from there, uh, when you you learn as an industrial chemist, you you also learn about forty percent more on the uh, process. So how to convert from the laboratory uh, small scale experiments into a uh, bigger scale of uh, process and also production or operation uh, in the industry. So we will talk uh, about the process uh, in, the, in, the lab, in the laboratory. But next, uh, our experiments or results, we will talk to the chemical engineers who, who can design the more bigger scale or mass production of whatever products or formulation that we got. Uh, in the lab, in the laboratory, so that's where comes this uh, industrial chemistry or industrial chemist uh, terms. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, working experience, uh, twenty years, twenty two years working experience. Uh, I started work just after graduation in ninety nine. Uh, so I, I started my career as a production engineer, uh, but this uh, this. Uh, particular manufacturing company is a metal stamping company uh, just a, a lot, around 20 percent of, of when you just the chemistry that you apply in the in the process but more on the mechanical engineering uh, from there I moved to Petronas back in 2006 uh, uh, whereby I, I moved into sales and marketing so it big jump from industrial chemists so people that sit in the laboratory and then you need to sell the product but the, the, the knowledge of the chemistry and my passion in chemistry actually assist me to uh, to do sales and marketing because uh, I can understand the process, I can understand the, 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 
formulation and and how it can benefit the, the, the customer or the consumer okay uh, from there i moved to uh, upstream uh, in uh, in petronas uh, by this one i'm i'm more on the risk management part uh, doing more assessment on the investment and also uh, whatever business that uh any plan in in upstream uh, business in petronas so uh, as part of uh, life, you need to have some balance. So the when we use more the left side of our brain, we, we need some uh, balance in, in our life. So some part of my right brain I use more to to uh, to entertain myself and and have uh, uh, involved more in music. Uh, whereby since my school days, I involved more in. Uh, uh, auditorium uh, preparation because my previous school we have uh, some sort of auditorium so i explore my 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 talent in in, in, uh, the, in the pa system uh, uh, controlling uh, and also uh, managing events at school uh, and so they from there in my sec my my, my uh, uni days i involved more in uh, doing uh, a funny uh, band performance uh, from there I, I explore also my my uh, enthusiasm in music and also currently i just uh, exploring youtube so i have my own youtube uh, channel uh, it's called Esaminda. so this particular channel i will share more on my uh, knowledge and experience uh, so for everybody to 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 look into as a reference so uh, uh, and also during my 22 years in in uh, working days, uh, I also uh, put some effort to to have a self self improvement in in uh, my journey, uh, whereby I obtain certification for a specific subject that that uh, I am interested with. Uh, first of all, in manufacturing, I obtained the CQE, uh, Certified Quality Engineer. So after that, uh, currently in risk management, I obtained two uh, certificate. Uh, this is for self uh, improvement. Well, first one is uh, the, the uh, UTC. Uh, UTC is more on unit trust consultant, uh, and in more and, and it is more uh, knowledge to, to 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 manage risk of investment. And also currently last year, I obtained the IEP. Uh, Islamic estate plan, planning, whereby to, to manage risk of uh, any, uh, uh, my all my harta uh, pusaka uh, estate management. Okay, you can see uh, it's a bit colorful uh, of my uh, particular uh, introduction, uh, and I'm uh, very honored to become your education partner. So our sharing today uh, is more on. Uh, waste to fuel subject but i will go from a specific to more broader view for this particular uh, waste to fuel and where it's actually uh, in this global current world is is uh, is placed and managed so we will start with some definition and then we will go into the type of waste uh, here type of waste uh, that uh, actually around us and we go specific to waste to fuel so you can see how uh, your daily waste can actually turn into something uh, useful uh, specifically fuel for this particular session and, al and also technologies involved in this particular subject waste to fuel and the bigger picture of uh, waste management and also a global uh, uh, agenda for this particular uh, waste subject okay uh, any questions on on this before i before i start uh ada apa -apa uh, can use both english and malay i'm okay uh, so the questions will yeah. be as the last session mm -hmm. so all the participants will ask you the question at the end okay the end okay all right so we we'll start with the definition. Uh, here you can see uh, the bigger set of pictures, three set of pictures. The first one you can see is a, a pile of uh, waste. Lah. 
and secondly, you can see uh, the burning uh, burning coal, I think, yeah. And then uh, fuel fueling your cars and also plant. And finally, you have combination of both. Uh, so the first one, in terms of definition, what I want to say here is about waste. You need to understand before you 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 proceed for something. You need to understand. You need to define uh, before you proceed for for your uh, experiments or for whatever you want to do. First, you need to define. You understand what you what actually you want. So in terms of waste, you need to understand that waste is things that uh, unwanted, unwanted in your lab, unwanted in your process of daily life. Uh, here he said this unwanted or discarded materials, rejected, useless, unneeded, or access to requirements. Uh, so if 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 you can see here, the definition is actually put this particular thing very low. So <laughs> so if you say someone is a waste, that you actually put him or her at a very low level. So actually, it's not uh, everything. Uh, when you start producing things, it's actually just uh, transferring from molecule to molecule, from one energy to one energy, and and another. Maybe it's a waste to you, but actually that particular waste is storing an energy that need to unleash, and it same goes to people. Uh, some somebody is actually yet to unleash this of his uh, talent. So. Uh, Every day we need to look into a process or things or activities that can unleash our 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 potential. Same goes to, same goes to this particular waste, whereby uh, this, like I said, just a, a, a molecular things and storing energy. So this particular waste is actually uh, have can become a good resource to, uh, to us. Okay. Secondly, the second picture here, what I want to say is the definition in terms of uh, fuel. So fuel is a material such as coal, gas, or oil that is burned into pro to produce heat or power. Okay, uh, from uh, the examples here, coal, gas, or oil is actually a uh, uh, established resource uh, here. But when we talk about waste, uh, how to 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 convert waste to fuel is another matter. So. So the particular waste is actually you unleash all the potential in the waste and you segregate and finally you come up with a, with a product that's, that can be considered as a fuel. Okay. And finally, uh, waste to fuel. Uh, waste to fuel is actually defined as material that has been used and exposed, which is which actually the waste, the waste and can be turned into energy efficient fuel to replace or complement other sources of energy in various applications. So uh, replace and complement. Why it says replace or complement? Because currently we have a primary source of energy that stated earlier, coal, gas, or oil. So so when, when it comes to uh, waste to fuel, it's actually can be considered as secondary or alternative here uh, for this particular uh, fuel uh, resource okay so i move to the type of waste so we after we define and we understand uh, secondly we need to look into the demarcation or type of waste that 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 uh, that is uh, surround surround us that is around us in in, in uh, at home domestically or at our workplace or in school, uh, if you at boarding school, you you, you will find that uh, there are a lot of type of waste also. And uh, first of all, is the municipal waste. This one is called municipal waste. Municipal waste uh, includes household waste, uh, commercial waste, and demolition waste. Okay. Ini kalau bahasa bahasa Melayunya. Sampah yang yang apa ni bandar air kutip, uh, okay. So municipal waste, municipal ni bandar air lah, bandar air. So bila kita manage this particular waste, it's actually datang daripada domestik. So yang uh, every day that you produce waste, you put outside, then uh, another contractor akan come out, akan surround you punya residential area, akan take up the waste. That one is the municipal waste, okay. 
Uh, second picture here, you can see here is actually uh, represent the hazardous waste includes industrial waste. So if you been uh, if you been in an industry one day or if if you can visit industry, there there always be a place that you you uh, segregate all the hazardous waste uh, hazardous waste that can uh, that need to be treated uh, by a certified or a licensed company. Okay, so <clears throat> the particular industry uh, supposedly to to throw out the waste using those uh, uh, companies' uh, services and then from there to ensure the, the hazardous waste is uh, managed. The third picture is actually, is, you can see here, all the pichagari here is a biomedical waste uh, into uh, clinical waste. Uh, if you uh, have a time to go to hospital, you can see there are special uh, dustbin or bin that that, that uh, identified for the, the the workers or doctors or nurses there to to throw out their waste. Uh, this, these are the biomedical waste uh, management. Okay. Finally, this one I think everybody is very full aware. Uh, it's a special hazardous waste. Special hazardous waste because the the it will cause. Uh, significant impact uh, to those handling and also those that uh, have a direct interact with the, 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 the waste. Here we can see that the example is radioactive waste, explosive waste and also electric, uh, electronic waste, e-waste. Okay. There's a special message here. Uh, when we talk about waste, we, we, we first of all, we need to know uh, how extent we can, as a, as a person, we can manage our waste. So we need to look into uh, the influence that uh, we produce the waste uh, on a daily basis. So actually, in, in, uh, in support to, to help uh, manage, uh, waste management, we supposed to can segregate all the waste uh, according to the, the, the uh, <coughs> according to the paper, glass, uh, organic or plastic uh, type. So this one actually can help the people that are managing your waste every day, especially the contractor to segregate and also uh, being, uh, manage the, the waste at the landfill or dump site area. Okay, that uh, just a general type of waste. Okay, there are two pictures here. Uh, when we talk to waste to fuel, uh, now we jump into waste to fuel. So, using waste uh, that cannot be recycled as energy source is one way to reduce the amount that is sent to landfill. What I want to say here is actually, uh, we producing a lot of waste. Uh, do anyone know actually how many waste that uh, people produce in a year? Can anyone guess? Because uh, this is very important to see how 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 crucial is this particular uh, waste to fuel subject. It's actually uh, we humans uh, in this particular earth is now produce an average of two billion tons of waste every year. Two billion tons. So where this all two billion tons goes? Some goes to the sea, some we, we, we manage at the landfill area, okay, some we use the incinerator. So there are a lot of waste that currently uh, producing every year. And also if you just focusing on plastic, plastic, uh, plastic waste is actually you and your family typically throw away around 40 kg of plastic uh, that could be recycled each year. So currently, if you don't have any recycle activity at your home, uh, an average is about 40 kg plastic uh, that you throw away. So all the plastic comes from all the products, all the tapau activities. Uh, from there, you can you can you can actually gauge that 40 kg is quite a lot for plastic. Okay. So this is very crucial. This one setting is just to give 
uh, a background uh, to everybody here that essentially there are a lot of waste out there then what we are going to do with all, all those waste. Okay. Another context setting or background that I want to share here is about uh, the depends, dependency on fuel. Uh, actually, uh, we are too dependent to fossil fuel. Fossil fuel is currently uh, oil and gas that we explore in upstream business uh, for our energy and transportation. Because uh, all the energy uh, that we use, the design, is more towards using fossil fuel. Uh, and the transportation, especially cars, uh, all the logistic, logistics uh, transportation design also based on uh, fossil fuels. Uh, why? Because currently fossil fuel is easy, can be considered as easy to get and also we already have all the technologies and and the, the, the cost also is actually cheaper uh, when we compare to the uh, alternative uh, fuel, okay? Uh, some info here, if you can see all barrel here. Okay, uh, estimated in 2016, so every year, uh, the oil and gas industry doing uh, estimation. So back in 2016, estimated the proven oil reserve it's actually around 1.65 uh, trillion barrels. So, if we if we want to 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 compare into consumption or check into our consumption daily, and all the proven reserve. Uh, first of all, I, I want to define the proven reserve. Proven reserve is actually reserve that uh, we found during the upstream. Uh, exploration activities and also proven that we can uh, take it out and commercialize into all the fuels uh, products okay so the, the world has proven uh, reserve equivalent to 46.6 times its annual consumption levels so the 1.65 trillion barrels you have uh, proven reserves and only equivalent to 46.6 times is a, a, a current annual consumption level. So what's left? Uh, so how long, how extend, or how long that this particular oil can can sustain? Okay. So it's about 47 years uh, from 2016. So 27, 47 years uh, from 2016 that this particular oil reserve uh, and also fossil fuel can, can sustain. So people currently is looking uh, how to reduce the, this particular uh, risk on have, uh, on the company, uh, depleting uh, oil reserves and also uh, how to be ready to respond to any uh, energy crisis. How to respond to all this uh, energy crisis. That's why from these two uh, angles of having a lot of uh, waste uh, with all the energy uh, uh, that are the contained inside the waste and also all the current uh, scenario for this particular fossil fuel, people are trying to come with alternatives that, that uh, to use this uh, the, the waste and convert it uh, to fuel. That's why this waste to fuel uh, particular uh, statement comes comes to, to the picture. Okay. Uh, I will talk about technologies. Uh, before that, in industrial chemist, uh, we learn about three things when we talk about uh, process. Uh, we talk about the uh, application of technologies. First of all, you need to understand what is your uh, input. So there are three parts here, input, process, and output. So along the way, when I talk about technologies here, you must have some visualization on the input, and then uh, we look into the process, and actually what is the output that you want to, to have uh, in the end of the process. So input here, the, uh, obviously, will be the, the waste. You can see in all the processes uh, or technologies here, yeah, I will show you. It's actually uh, input will be the, the uh, 
twist and the process is actually the application of my mechanical uh, thermodynamics and also uh, chemistry to actually process the waste and finally to, to come up with the product or the output that is actually the, the fuel. So from waste process and comes to the fuel products. Okay. Let's move on to the technologies here. <coughs> so actually this is, this is the input. Waste, uh, transport, storage, transportation. You're talking about how you manage the input. It's actually the waste. How you bring the waste into the particular process. And the first process here that I want to share in, in terms of uh, waste to fuel or in industry they call it waste to energy is the combustion, pembakaran, combustion. This is very general combustion uh, process. Uh, we will see more in uh, incoming slides. Okay. Second one, we have thermochemical com conversion. So from the particular uh, waste, we use uh, heat thermo and also we use a chemical uh, reaction to actually come up with the process uh, that can also segregate between the residual and also the final product uh, where the final product here in terms of thermochemical conversion we are focusing more on the syn gas uh, we will see more on syn gas here it's actually a syn gas that will become uh, feed stock for another process that can uh, produce uh, alternative fuels. Okay, the third one is uh, physical chemical conversion. Physic chemical, uh, saja. Physical is a physic. So uh, for this physical chem chemical conversion, the particular physical uh, attribute of the, the the waste is is retained, and also we use a uh, physical process to 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 segregate or separate. Uh, we support from the chemical process uh, and from here you can see that the, uh, the, the example of the process is extraction uh, this one is particularly for vegetable oil and also ester esterification so ester esterification is very interesting because currently uh, we're going for biodiesel even in our retail market also we have uh, biodiesel so we can uh, so we can can look after this on this esterification. Uh, just now under thermochemical conversion we have uh, torrefaction char means we use the heat uh, plasma treatment uh, gasification pyrolysis uh, pyrolysis is very interesting subject so I will focus more on this pyrolysis and liquefaction uh, how to uh, on methanol. Okay, the final uh, process that uh, we can have here in, in waste to fuel conversion is actually uh, biochemical conversion uh, focusing on fermentation uh, where the final product will be the ethanol and also the anaerobic digestion or biogas. So these are four main uh, waste to fuel conversion technologies that are available today in the market. And I will share uh, the, the, the little bit theory on the uh, on each of the uh, technology, uh, and also I also have prepared some uh, uh, short videos uh, I just took from from YouTube uh, that I have chosen that, that the best that can uh, portray the the, the uh, general process or or general knowledge for this particular process. <clears throat> okay, uh, we move to the first technology. Uh, the first one is combustion. Combustion is a direct incineration of waste enables the highest recovery of the energy content from the thermodynamic point of view. So, the ini bahasa uh, science, but the, the actual atau bahasa yang mudah difahami is pembakaran. So, bila you bakar, you, con you, 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 uh, when you produce heat, and you use the heat is actually uh, you can see here this is the waste okay and then you go for combustion you back up when you uh, go for this particular process combustion and then you create heat all the heat to channel up to the boiler here uh, boiler in Malay they call it dandang in industry so boiler there are specific engineer that looking for boiler okay? Uh, from the boiler, 
is actually we channel uh, the heat to become uh, energy for the turbine. Okay, so fueling, waste to fuel is here. From the material process uh, into combustion is the waste to fuel. The waste become fuel to 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 uh, create the heat, and all the, the the final product is the heat. Then we channel to to become a, a source of uh, power to to generate to to run the turbine. So from the turbine is we we change to the generator. We channel the energy to the generator and to the power grid and back to the rest to the home or industry. Okay, so you can see here just from a combustion of uh, waste, essentially you, you can you can change the, the energy uh, from heat. Uh, you you transfer it into the into the electrical uh, or electric power grid. Okay, so this is the the. The, the diagram here. In term of uh, chemistry, this is a basic chemistry. CH hydrocarbon. So inside the waste, uh, after segregation or whatever process that that in the material process to uh, manage, then then we can we can see here that the the, the general process of this particular uh, combustion is uh, hydrocarbon plus oxygen. You heat it up and it come up with the carbon dioxide also water. So you can see here water, they use as a cooler, uh, source for cooler over here. And the CO2 is uh, water vapor that uh, we channel it out. Okay. There are pro and cons for this particular combustion. Uh, in, in, in commercial terms, they call it incinerator. So there are pro and cons in having this incinerator because you need to also con to manage all the uh, residual gases uh, produced by the, the combustion process. Not only the CO2, but also because you have uh, a lot, a lot of waste that, that you don't know where, where it actually comes from. So particularly they will come out maybe H2S or NOx and, and those uh, particular hazardous uh, gases actually to manage inside this process. Okay. So I will share a short video uh, about this waste to energy plan. Uh, you can see and understand more from this particular video. Uh, this project is in the Mexico City. Uh, it is uh, actually combustion or is the kind of uh, waste to fuel uh, uh, waste to fuel process okay i will change to yard, a fully enclosed site to avoid the emission of odors to the outside, with capacity to receive 20 walking floor semi-trailer trucks simultaneously. Waste received will be mechanically transported through the use of overhead cranes to the feed hoppers which are connected to the combustion grates and where a controlled temperature of over 1000 degrees Celsius is maintained. The resulting combustion gas will exchange heat with boiler water tubes to generate high pressure and high temperature steam. The steam will feed the turbine for electricity generation. The cycle finishes at the air cooling condensers where the exiting turbine stream is condensed back to water. 
resulting water returns to the beginning of the process, completing in that way a closed loop cycle with zero fluid discharge. The plant will have four separate combustion lines, which will operate simultaneously and remain active 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The energy produced by the Mexico City New Waste to Energy Plant will be interconnected to the National Electrical System and will distribute 965,000 megawatts per hour on a yearly basis to the Mexico City subway network to power the 12 subway lines. This energy is equivalent to the required for powering 120,000 homes. The plant will be equipped with state-of-the-art technology available for treating flue gas emissions, thus ensuring compliance with environmental regulations not only in Mexico, but pursuant to the highest global standards. It will also be equipped with a real-time emissions monitoring system to guarantee a proper control of emissions within the allowable levels. The combustion byproducts are to be adequately managed and may be employed as construction material. This project complies with the highest quality standards to maximize energy recovery thanks to a more efficient management of urban solid waste. One of the great challenges in this world. It okay, uh, quite interesting video to me. I I, I believe uh, it can excite you all to see all the the combustion uh, tower and also the silo tower that using for to vent all the gases uh, it's actually a process so waste to fuel is just uh, uh, maybe at the, uh, the, the 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 initial part of the process okay but but the important is from waste to fuel uh, this particular design for the incinerator is 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 channeling the the energy to the turbine and and, and produce uh, uh, electrical uh, supply uh, to the to the masses in Mexico. So you can see here is uh, you need some creativity, just not only to manage the waste, but where to channel on the the the, the fuel that that, uh, that that you use in the process. And this is particular thing that uh, more, most chemical engineers will do. Okay, the design and also how to make use of the, the, the end products. <clears throat> so in some interest uh, facts for you, is actually when you see the, the, the vent ventilation tower, uh, if you learn in, in uh, industrial chemistry, uh, and also if you experience in, in one day in industry, it's actually you have a standard on how, how, uh, how much you can vent out every day at certain time. Uh, they have a periodic uh, schedule and also they have a uh, certain uh, level of uh, gases that you can uh, vent out and also the, the particular color, particular uh, height of the, the gas that flow out from the ventilation. That's all under, under mostly under DOE. Okay, they control that. So you can see, you, I, I, I hope that you can understand uh, better from the video, especially on the combustion. Okay. The next one, we go to thermochemical combustion. Uh, this, this is a particular subject that I, I have my interest most. Uh, the, the, the process here that I want to focus in is the uh, TRU combustion of uh, organic waste uh, renewable energy. If, if you can see here, the process is simple. The, 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 the concept is input is the feedstock from the shredded waste, pelletized uh, waste or, or wood chip 
uh, TRU means uh, thermal recovery unit. So you burn uh, the feedstock inside the TRU uh, using the spiralysis uh, concept and you can segregate the carbon char or carbon comes from the, the TRU pyrolysis. So TRU pyrolysis is very uh, uh, very high temperature process uh, and also they have uh, no oxygen uh, exposed to the to the to the to the particular process because the carbon char uh, will easily to, to to separate between the char and also the gases. And the interesting uh, product here, uh, final product that we can consider as fuel from waste uh, to fuel, the output here is the uh, particular seam gas. So let let uh, I want to let you know that this particular seam gas is very interesting. It's uh, just carbon and hydrogen combination of gas, but but the, the this particular seam gas is actually a, a, a crucial feedstock to to that you can use to to, uh, to have a steam power in your industrial area. You can generate power just like now is to generate uh, the uh, turbine. But the particular uh, thing that interests me most is on the synthetic, uh, in on the transportation fuel. Whereby you can uh, use the steam gas to, to, to uh, generate or to come up with another uh, fuel. So it's more in it's more waste to fuel kind of process. So syn gas conversion is uh, what I can share here is uh, syn gas conversion to methanol. Uh, we have syn gas here, two H two CO, and with a particular process, uh, you can actually change it to uh, methanol, CH three OH. This is um, just a basic. So methanol is actually. Uh, a very basic uh, uh, alcohol that we can use in, to 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 become uh, alternative fuel. Okay, so this process is highly exothermic. Uh, you, I believe you already learned the exothermic and also endothermic uh, uh, kind of process. So this one is highly exothermic. Okay, the process carries out the conversion in fixed bed reactor. This is a fi fixed bed uh, reactor. Uh, and also the, the 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 parameters is about 600 to 1700 uh, uh, in terms of pressure and also 400 to 600 Fahrenheit of temperature so catalyst also used here uh, to accelerate the process uh, typically it's a mixture of copper zinc uh, oxide alumina and magnesia okay so if you if you can imagine uh, those things that you learn in laboratory or you experiment to 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 prove your hypothesis, actually you can convert into a big uh, process here. Okay, so let's see the simple video uh, for this particular pyrolysis. So you can see this 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 is a, just a small. Uh, furnace like uh, setup uh, but it actually give uh, a lot of benefit and from this particular process you can see it's actually you can scale up so for this uh, small setup uh, and then maybe uh, from the chemical engineer point of view and also assistance uh, the, the, the investor can make a bigger uh, plan for this particular pyrolysis uh, process I will share the video. Tete Group has been on the recycling market for 19 years. We develop, design, and manufacture equipment for waste recycling and obtaining energy from alternative sources. The Universal Waste Recycling Pyrolysis Plant, Fortan, processes various types of household and industrial solid, liquid, and paste-like wastes. Used tires, rubber products, plastic waste, used oil, drill cuttings, and oil sludge, oil contaminated soils, oil products that lost their quality. Waste is recycled without prior preparation and pretreatment. 
Retort is a cylindrical vessel of heat-resistant stainless steel with a lid that has a special closure for pressurization and excluding air from entering the retort. The retort volume is 2.6 cubic meters. The retort has a truncated cone bottom in order to prevent metal deformation at high temperatures. The pyrolysis module is a vertical furnace lined with refractory concrete with reinforcement and high temperature thermal insulation based on ceramic fiber. The module is equipped with an air-cooled solid fuel furnace for burning poor quality fuels and a gas burner for... Ah! ...the possibility of using different types of fuels. Waste for recycling is loaded into the retort. The dimensions of the retort allow loading large, non-shredded waste pieces. After loading, the retort is placed in the pyrolysis module. Unnecessary temperature is created in the pyrolysis module. The raw material is heated through the walls of the retort and is subjected to thermal decomposition without oxygen access. After the end of the process, the retort is removed from the module and it is left in the open air for cooling. The next retort is placed in the module. The set of the plant includes two retorts, which are changed one after the other without interruption. Carbon unloading from the cooled retort to the container is carried out by means of a hoisting crane. When the waste is heated and decomposed, a vapor gas mixture is formed inside the retort, which is piped to a condenser to cool and condense the pyrolysis vapor. Condensed liquid fuel oil is drained into a collector, wherefrom it is pumped into a storage tank. The liquid fuel oil can be used as an energy carrier in boiler houses for generation of electric power in steam generators. And also it can be used for recycling into gasoline, kerosene and diesel fractions. Non-condensable gases pass through the system of separators where they are thoroughly cleaned from the liquid droplets and then sent to a gas burner and used as fuel to support the process. It is important to note that additional fuel is needed only at the initial stage of the Fortan plant launch. Once the process is stabilized, the non-condensable gas produced during the raw material recycling is sent to the burner and used as fuel to maintain the plant. Maximum efficiency is achieved when two or more pyrolysis modules operate simultaneously, as the excess gas from the first module can be used to heat the second one. The modules are constantly at different stages of the process. The second module passes the stage of maximum gas generation at the moment when the first module requires the greatest fuel demand. Thus, there is no need for additional fuel. The emissions to the atmosphere are significantly reduced and there is no need to install a gas holder for temporary storage of pyrolysis gas. There is no ignition problem. Even if a large number of pyrolysis modules operate simultaneously, the control for working process and ending of pyrolysis process is carried out under the technological parameters, temperature and pressure. According to the manual, all technological parameters are monitored and controlled from the operator's control panel. The Fortan plant is equipped with an explosion-proof valve and the system of emergency gas relief, which in the event of a malfunction, will exclude the possibility of damage to equipment and health of maintenance staff. The Fortan plants are designed as mobile units. The overall dimensions of the complex correspond to the dimensions of a 40-foot, 1,219.2 centimeter container. The site for placing the equipment does not require long preparation and large-scale construction works. All connections in the design are flanged for operational reinstallation and installation on the site. The set of the plant includes a transportation stand. Standard version plants are designed to operate at ambient temperatures up to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Upon request, we produce special versions of Fortan plants that can work at temperatures up to minus 60 degrees Celsius. Fortan plants are durable, safe, easy to operate and self-maintained. More than 200 Fortan plants operate in 16 countries. Australia, Argentina, Armenia, Belarus, Bulgaria, India, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Transnistria, the Russian Federation, Turkmenistan, Turkey, Ukraine, the Republic of South Africa, the Republic of Panama, and Thailand.
The warranty is provided for the entire range of equipment. Our specialists provide equipment setup and staff training in any country around. Okay, uh, that's actually uh, marketing punya uh, video eh, because uh, you can see how we market this particular product for this particular pyrolysis plant, it's called Fort Time. So it's a small scale, uh, small scale uh, plant uh, and why, why, why we, can, we can have small scale, bigger scale because the best uh, to put waste to fuel uh, industry is, is uh, attached to the what? what the primer industry are you in. So maybe that particular company have a primer industry that they want to uh, eliminate the, the, the fuel or, or it's, it is better or, or economical to to, to change, uh, to to manage the, the waste by having this particular uh, pyrolysis plant. So there are lots also cost in waste management that you can uh, check out later. So. Uh, the, the the first one, the combustion is more on uh, uh, governments or uh, uh, industry player that invest uh, for the for the sake for the for the people uh, in a, in a bigger bigger picture. But this this pyrolysis is focusing more on uh, small industry or it can attach to whatever primary industry. Uh, and the same uh, concept to 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 do the waste management. Okay, very interesting uh, small plant here. Uh, you can see just now how we how the, how the, the, the particular plant uh, uh, con converts the, the, the gas, condense it and, and turn it into uh, uh, fuel here. Okay, the third one. Uh, this one is uh, more to biochemical or physical chemical uh, physics and chemistry kind of uh, process it is called uh, physical chemical conversion where you convert the particular uh, waste into another uh, kind of uh, useful uh, fuel so for this physical chemical the, the, the best uh, or the, the very excited if you want to look into is this particular and transesterification process uh, whereby the transesterification is actually uh, it breaks the, the chain in the triglyceride uh, usually the, the, the triglyceride comes from the oil and fat uh, waste and then you use alcohol uh, using use some uh, catalyst and you break it to glycerol and mixture of fatty acid ester so Glycerol uh, or mixture of fatty acid ester is actually you can use to produce other kind of fuels or products. And this particular process here, you can see uh, it is used to, to produce uh, biodiesel from the oil or fats uh, uh, waste. Yeah. So the, the, the selection of the technology is also based on whatever waste that you have in hand or whatever waste that you currently want to manage. Okay, there's also a, a short video on this when you can see and understand more on this particular transesterification. This is a setup uh, for this particular uh, uh, for physical chemical uh, conversion. Uh, then I will share the video. It's actually to produce uh, biodiesel. Trans biodiesel, we fuel the world. Reducing air pollution and global warming is on everybody's lips today. The biodiesel industry in particular is in desperate and immediate need for a greener, more cost efficient and safer technologies. Founded in 2007, Transbio Diesel has developed Transzyme A, 
the world's only patent-protected, immobilized enzyme-based catalyst for industrial-scale production of biodiesel. While the chemical conventional process for the production of biodiesel is harmful to the environment and requires expensive, high-quality feedstock, TransBiodiesel's technology allows the use of the lowest grade and least expensive feedstock, such as brown grease. Our immobilized enzymes, a game-changer technology, operates at ambient temperature with low carbon footprint and no toxic waste. The transzyme A used in our biodiesel process is reusable and can be used for more than six months, resulting in a significant reduction of production costs. The technology behind a trans biodiesel's enzymatic process is groundbreaking. The process is very simple. The high acid value waste oil and the methanol are premixed and then added to the stirring continuous enzymatic reactor. Developed methanol resistant immobilized enzymes catalyze both transesterification and esterification reactions in a one pot reaction medium. The resulting reaction mixture after the enzymatic conversion instantly splits to two layers. The upper layer contains mainly crude biodiesel and minor concentrations of unreacted glycerides and free fatty acids. The bottom layer contains glycerol, water, and excess methanol. The reaction cycle using Transyme A delivers more than 96% conversion of any type of low quality feedstock to crude biodiesel. The formed crude biodiesel is transferred to the post-treatment vessel using TransBiodiesel's proprietary purification process to yield ASTM and EN spec grade biodiesel. Depending on the feedstock grade, the glycerol byproduct is clear and free of salts, which is much cleaner than glycerol produced by any other available technique used in the production of biodiesel. As market forecasts show a total growth of 128% in the production of biodiesel by 2020, the biodiesel's plant's owners choosing our IP-protected enzymatic technology will benefit from substantial production and time savings. In environmental contaminants reduction, our engineering know-how, and ongoing enzyme supply. In a joint venture, the plants will enjoy an expected ROI in less than 36 months. Okay, just a recap. Eh? Uh, just now you have a premix of the the input for this particular process. So the premix will be the, the oil and fats here. And from there it goes to the uh, catalyzer. So if we understand the, 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 the role of catalyst is actually to accelerate the process, you can see those molecules there when it goes into this particular uh, tank and, and it, it accelerate the process and come up with all the three products that we have here, the biodiesel and also water, glycerol. Uh, from there, it separate into this particular tank for glycerol and, and the 96% of the biodiesel is channeled to this particular tank and as treated and we have the uh, standard uh, standard uh, biodiesel that we contain in this particular tank. So it's just a small process that you can see in the earlier of the, earlier of the video is the role of the chemist here, chemist there. So they, they, what I believe that the chemist is doing is, is actually you look into the parameters of the process uh, and also you test all the parameters, the catalyst, how, how extend, how much you want to use the, the catalyst because if you learn in chemistry the catalyst has its own graph at one particular point of the catalyst in your profile it will open the, it will uh, have no more reaction and that's why we need the chemist to 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 look into how optimized that we can use the catalyst uh, from there you also see just now uh, the role of any an, analytical chemist 
so those are people who who do testing and also playing with all the graphs uh, there uh, is called uh, analytical chemist uh, in usm there is another uh, sub, another subject for under chemistry school is uh, analytical chemistry uh, have their own bachelor of applied science and analytical chemistry and so analytical chemistry also can uh, produce people that can work uh, particularly uh, obviously that you, you may be you aware is on the CSI part uh, of the investigation the crime scene investigator uh, most of them are industrial chemists uh, and analytical chemists so I have one of my friends there uh, currently work with the, the, the Jabatan Kimia is an analytical chemist and also he works uh, more on solving uh, cases uh, that when the under investigation by the PDRM. So it's a very uh, interesting topic about this chemistry. When when you go to application, it can uh, it can uh, evolve. Okay, not only industry but also in in in, the, uh, in other parts of the of the uh, uh, of of the management or government uh, practices so we also can become a support to them so if you look into the particular csi uh, tv series then how the, the interestingly the chemist uh, can produce evidences and look out for for clues okay so that's the beauty of this uh, chemistry so we move the for the final one uh, the final uh, ways to fuel conversion uh, technique or technology is on the biomass, okay? Biochemical conversion is involved the use of enzymes, bacteria, or other microorganism. So mostly, if you, you can see that earlier in the slides just now, it's more on anaerobic and also use uh, uh, catalyst uh, of alcohol. So overall view of conventional biochemical conversion. For this particular slide, I want to talk about this lignocellulosic biomass. Uh, it's actually is a biochemical process where the the, the, the input or, or the waste that, that used here is comes from the uh, uh, from the crops okay you can see here biomass so the process you have pre-treatment catalyst and heat and then you go to the enzymatic hydrolysis and here you have the all the cellulases that that the uh, that promotes the, the process and the, the, the output is actually sugars where you, you, you channel the sugars into two, uh, two uh, processes here fermentation also catalytic upgrading and from there you can come up with uh, specific or design uh, fuel or chemicals okay in terms of chem uh, in terms of uh, chemistry equation we have here glucose, a simple equation is glucose uh, use, using yeast as a catalyst to, to produce ethanol and also uh, carbon dioxide. Okay, this is a very basic uh, chemical uh, equation that, that you can see, also you can learn. Okay, so let's see the video on this biochemical conversion in real life. Biochemical conversion. Uses enzymes and microorganisms to convert biomass into sugars and those sugars into biofuels or bioproducts that can replace products currently made from crude oil. Here's one example of a biochemical conversion process. After biomass is collected and transported to the processing facility, it undergoes a pretreatment process, so the components of the biomass are easier to break down with enzymes in the subsequent steps. Steam or water, sometimes in the presence of chemicals, is used to break down the biomass into cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. In one possible approach, acid is used for pretreatment. However, enzymes can't operate in highly acidic conditions, so a base is used to balance the pH and the mixture is cooled before the enzymes are added. 
enzymes perform a chemical reaction called hydrolysis. During this process, the enzymes break the cellulose chains into glucose and the hemicellulose chains into xylose. Glucose and xylose are the sugars that can most readily be fermented into ethanol or other biofuels. During the fermentation process, the mixture is inoculated with microbes, such as yeast or bacteria, that digest the sugars and secrete compounds that can be used as biofuels or biofuel components. This total conversion process takes approximately three to five days. In the case of ethanol, the liquid is separated by distillation, which is a method of separating mixtures based on differences in their boiling points. The resulting ethanol is collected and purified for use in blending with fuel. The sugars can also be fermented or chemically converted into longer chain molecules. With the addition of hydrogen, these molecules are processed into renewable gasoline and diesel. The solids and liquids remaining after distillation, known as stillage, then undergo a series of steps to remove water from the mixture. Solid and liquid separation, whether by centrifugation or other means, is used to recover the insoluble lignin-rich residue. This residue can then be sent to an on-site combustion system where it is burned to generate steam and electricity that can be used for power. The Department of Energy is working to develop cost-competitive advanced biofuels by reducing cost and improving efficiency throughout the biochemical process. Current R&D focuses on high-yield feedstocks, more efficient enzymes, and more robust microorganisms that will advance biochemical conversion processes to provide clean, renewable transportation fuels and other products. Okay, uh, back to the biochemical conversion process. Uh, just now we see the, uh, the pretreatment conditioning is just to get the readiness of the input, actually the biomass uh, uh, waste. And also you have both the, the, the particular process, you can see the process here, enzymatic analysis, uh, where you need to uh, allow the enzyme to, to, to accelerate the process and having the, the, the uh, feedstock for the fermentation and once the fermentation uh, complete you can dist dist have a distillation and also dehydration to segregate all the products and also you can see just now how the residual uh, also being managed can become another fuel uh, fuel resource okay so the, the the processes are there and also then back to the to the research and development to whether to convert the processes uh, into a big scale industry uh, that's, that's that is actually the challenge there for the industrial chemist because you actually found something or you formulate something but in the end to commercialize you need uh, is collaboration or cooperation from others you need investor you need uh, chemical engineers you need a uh, designer uh, that actually can can support you to to have a uh, maybe a small scale uh, kind of plant and then move it to the big scale of plant and in the end uh, can can uh, produce uh, alternative fuels eh? so just a summary for the processes all the all, and all the technologies uh, combustion uh, thermochemical uh, physical chemical and also finally the biochemical Actually, it's already there uh, in, 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 in current study or uh, any initial kind of plan uh, design. Mm -hmm. So it's actually what, we, what do we need to do now? Or what do we do now? Uh, is it we want to wait? And as a student, is, uh, is the question is how I can contribute to all this uh, uh, waste management or waste to fuel? Uh, how I can contribute to this particular process. Okay, so we need to go to a bigger picture from waste to fuel, and then we go to waste to energy, and at the end we need to understand what is the end in mind to having all these technologies, or or, or to apply all the technologies in 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 our waste management for our daily life. Uh, it is important to have a bigger picture, uh, bigger end in mind. To, to channel our 
our effort and become something that very useful. So currently, globally, we have uh, sustainable development goals. Okay, this one is uh, designed by United Nations. So what is uh, in this sustainable uh, development goals? Okay, sustainable. What what we want to sustain here? The question is what uh, what we want to sustain. Uh, to whom that this particular sustainable uh, goals will be benefit to. So these are questions that currently globally talking about, and people in industry are very uh, uh, very keen on this particular uh, development goals because it will impact the business. How how we will conduct the business, like Petronas, how Petronas will conduct uh, auto or channel this particular uh, ideas or requirements to to current business. Is it will move to oil and gas, to oil and gas and energy, or particularly in the end of the fossil fuel for next 47 years, we will be totally energy management. Uh, that's this currently that we are doing, uh, especially in business to understand the sustainable uh, development goals. Okay, uh, it says here that sustainable development goals are vital for recovery that leads to greener, more inclusive economies and stronger, more resilient societies. So these are the, 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 the statement for this particular goals. So it want to have a greener, more inclusive economies and stronger. So people can become uh, more resilient uh, to whatever that comes in future. So the, 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 the change uh, has to be uh, done now. And also waste to fuel is, not, is a one of the subject under the energy or under this particular sustainable development goals. So whatever you do now, or whenever you graduated later, or or involve the industry or in your your daily working life, please have this particular and in mind of the bigger picture. So it can helps you to have uh, some sort of um, uh, focus and also uh, excitement. And in the end, uh, what can make you feel up uh, very post happy lah if you work to, to towards uh, something or, or you want to achieve something okay under this particular sustainable development goals uh, there are 17 okay uh, 17 goals here uh, starting from no poverty number one uh, zero hunger good health and well-being uh, quality education uh, gender equality uh, clean water sanitation uh, affordable and clean energy, uh, decent work and economic growth, uh, industry innovation and infrastructure, uh, reduce inequalities, sustainable uh, su sustainable cities and uh, communities until the number 70 is partnership for the goals. So each of the uh, goals, they have uh, their details. And currently, all the multinational companies, all the industries out there is aligning their business uh, vision, mission, and also uh, business opportunity according to this, all the particular sustainable development goals. So it has, it has pro and cons in, in to business, uh, but for, um, for, for moving forward uh, and also to stay relevant in the industry, uh, uh, the, the multinational companies need to change. Uh, so from currently, let's say Petronas oil and gas, uh, maybe can, uh, in future we are going for a new energy or sustainable energy. And sustainability is currently is part of uh, the business uh, vision and mission. So uh, what I want to say here, just not only to understand the waste to fuel one subject, but when you when you read or you have all this all communication through uh, television or uh, uh, whatever YouTube channel you, you uh, go through. You need to look into this, uh, how this particular thing is uh, uh, linked to this sustainable development goals. Okay. Uh, that set up my presentation. Essentially, when I can summarize this, uh, we understand the, the, the situation of the waste and situation of the fuel. Uh, from there, we learn about the technologies so technology is here. What can we choose uh, based on uh, our our current situation of waste management, and how we can uh, from there we can contribute to the to the better and sustainable 
goals for the future, especially for the future, future generation. Okay, with that, uh, I end my presentation and I open now for any question. Thank you, Mr. Bashti, for the mind-blowing webinar today. So now, for the Q&A session, we are opening questions to the members of the floor. Participants are given 10 minutes time to ask any topic-related question in the chat box. While waiting for others, Mr. Mashdi, I have a personal question. Okay. Fuel is widely utilized in various industries and it is a lead to a sustainable future. So can we imagine our future life without the presence of fuel or could it be replaced by any other material? Okay. Uh, currently, uh, the fuel situation, if you if you saw just now the slide, is uh, estimated for another 47 years. Okay. So what we can do in terms of uh, risk management point of view, uh, actually we want to reduce the risk. So by to reduce the risk of not having the, the fossil fuel. Okay. So how to reduce the risk? You you need to identify uh, what risks are related to this particular fossil fuel. Uh, maybe is, is, is it the, the, the consumption of the, of the fossil fuel or current design of the transportation and using the fossil fuel, how we, uh, how we use uh, the fossil fuel in daily life, how to be more um, efficient to use the energy. Uh, and it's, when you talk about this, then it goes back to the usage of the energy. Okay. So from there, essentially, you need to have a, a, a good plan to respond to the crisis. Let's say the crisis after the, the, the 48 years is already no fuel. So we can prepare now. So what we can do now is actually to, to, to uh, prepare for, for this particular uh, no fossil fuel situation. Okay, that's why the sustainable development goals comes here. It's actually uh, targeted to have all these goals by 2050. So from now until 2050, we we'll have another 30 years. That's why all the the big big companies is uh, doing whatever they can in, in order to uh, to have uh, more more greener and more uh, safer in terms of uh, uh, energy uh, usage. And also, governments have have lots of new policies. And also new new uh, enhancement in their in their policies, just to cater this particular sustainable development, and also to manage the, the risk if, if if this particular fossil fuel happen. And also we we now see lots of uh, uh, alternative energy or new energy comes in, so especially solar in Malaysia. Uh, but other countries, you can see also the wind uh, turbine and also the wave, uh, uh, sea wave turbine. Uh, also, people looking for more alternative, uh, especially for, for energy. So, uh, what we can do now is uh, exercise all, all the knowledge and also technologies that we have and have a good uh, policy in order to manage uh, the consumption of the fossil fuel. In the end, we can sustain. Maybe from the forty-seven years can go to to, to uh, eighty years, and from there, if we be more efficient in in, in uh, energy consumption, it can extend another hundred years. Uh, I think that's that's my answer uh, for the question. Thank you, Mr. Masti, for the very brief answer. Now I have collected some other questions from our participants today. Yeah. From Shina Rajendran, if we could convert waste to energy and fuel, then why we are not implementing it immediately worldwide? Instead, why we are still depending on petroleum, which is not good for the environment? Okay, that's, uh, in my intro just now, I said that currently the, the there is a we can consider abundance of, of reserve, and the, the everything uh, now is designed to. Uh, to have uh, fossil fuel as as the the the, the primary energy, uh, a primary energy resource. 
So when it comes to in totality, currently the the fossil fuel is still considered as cheap uh, for for uh, for the consumption. That's why we we little bit uh, people are a little bit slow in, in in using the alternative, and you can see the alternative uh, resources for energy also uh, need lot of investment. And even in Malaysia, we're still waiting for our first incinerator, and and and. And uh, the government also uh, put out all the incentive and also uh, lots of uh, uh, policies to support this. But in the end, it's, it's back to the investment uh, policies. Uh, you can you can as a government you can you can have a policy and also incentive. But if if the, there is no uh, right investor uh, with the current point of time of of, of uh, pandemic, uh, so that will slowing down all the. Uh, changes from from the fossil fuel to the alternative fuel, uh, but the the main reason is uh, supply demand and also the the cost the cost of the energy, yeah, and availability to to other to the to the masses lah. Thank you, sir. And the final question is from Mailwanan Kuwanabalan. In future, what will be the main source of electricity in our country? Will it be hydroelectric source or solar power source? Uh, hydroelectric still will be the main uh, source for for Malaysia uh, because we have abundance of uh, uh, hydro uh, supply. Uh, but but we are moving towards the the solar and solar power source. Uh, right now, uh, in in Petronas itself, we we uh, invest in in. Uh, Solar companies, uh, so we we look into the the alternative for this particular uh, energy resource, and also governments also have opened lots of, of, of incentive and policies for solar farm. Uh, if you can, if you can, if you have have uh, opportunity to go uh, from KL to 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 Johor Bahru, uh, so in between the the the, the plus highway. At uh, maybe af right after, uh, right after I grow, there is one solar farm, a big solar farm there. Uh, you can spot it there. So people are looking to have more solar farm uh, in Malaysia, and also houses uh, now they are, they are promoting uh, for a solar panel. So you can you can use the solar panel as your, your domestic consumption, and at the same time you can send back to KNB. Uh, so. Uh, the, the the future of Malaysia, I look into more of this particular solar because we have uh, uh, we have uh, lots of uh, sun uh, uh, resource uh, every year. So this we we need to tap on this particular uh, energy resource. Uh. Thank you, sir, for clearing our doubts. Mm -hmm. Now I'll pass the stage to Harim. The news thanks to our speaker, Mr. Machi, and the moderator, Sivu Purmi, for a wonderful webinar. Dear participants, please click the link in the chat box or scan the QR code to answer an attendance form and claim your certificate. Para Hadidin Sakalian, Hila Sakan link Dalam chat box atau scan code QR untuk menjawab boran soal keadiran dan menerima sijil penyertaan anda. Ulang suara. Dear participants, please click the link in the chat box or send the QR code to answer an attendance form and claim your certificate. Para hadirin sekalian, sila tekan link dalam chat box atau scan code QR untuk menjawab boran kehadiran dan menerima sujud anda.
Dear participants, it seems we have reached the end of our chemi talk. Once again, thank you all for attending this chemi talk series for today. We will organize more webinars like this in the future. Hope to see you all again soon. Till then, stay safe and stay home. Today's webinar has come to an end. Participants are allowed to leave the meeting. Thank you. Madhyas Harini. Sudah pun bersurai. Hari ini dibenarkan untuk meninggalkan majlis sekarang. Terima kasih.